I've talked to some other quarterbacks, and the Hail Mary, in their eyes, is like a throw in hope. You know, like it's a, yeah, it's a throw in hope. We got a bunch here. They'll end up here. We're going to throw in hope. It. And then whenever you start looking at what Kyler did, and Kyler literally tweeted out, shit, D Hop is down there somewhere. And then you look at you with your success. Is there more to it than a throw in hope that people should realize whenever you come to that? Or were those guys who said that pretty accurate? Because you've been very successful at it, obviously. We had a, we had a poll the other day on who's the best Hail Mary thrower of all time. Uh, you won. Jesus Christ came in second because he did throw some good Hail Marys. People forgot they're still being caught to, to this day. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Kyler Murray came in third, which is good yeah. for our poll, by the way, because recency bias normally owns it. So even the Internet was like, uh, Aaron's the guy at this thing. What, what is it about those things that have a higher percentage than people think for you? Well, I mean, I don't know how, what the, the percentage is. I think it just comes down to the way you throw it. If you can find a clean spot, um, you know, in or outside the pocket, the key for ours has always been kind of the trajectory. Um, you know, if you take out the Jeff Janis one, which was similar in nature to uh, Hopkins, other than there were three guys around Hop and really just uh, Patrick Peterson around uh, Jeff Janis. Um, you know, the other two, I was trying to get to a clean spot and throw it as high as possible. And on both of those, I think there was a misjudgment by the majority of the players on the field as to where the ball was going to come down. Uh, the first one in Detroit, most of the guys went to, to Devontae, who at the time was the jumper on the play. Because um, everybody has a specific role uh, within, the, within the Hail Mary if you're doing the classic, uh, traditional kind of throw to a spot. And they went to Devontae, who was the jumper. Uh, and, you know, Rich, Richard Rogers just kind of moseyed down there and looked around and looked up and, you know, he made a, made a great catch on the ball, which was about five yards from kind of the uh, what was – thought to be the apex point of the ball, um, you know, seven yards in the end zone. And I would say the one in the Giants game as well in the playoffs, because of the height of it, uh, again, when it came down, most guys thought it was going to be in the middle of the end zone. And there's Cobby there in the back of the end zone uh, catching basically a, a, you know, a free ball because uh, a little bit of a misjudging of uh, where the ball is going to come down. Yeah, you, that's hilarious. Well, and then this one, and then this one, and then this one, and then this. I don't even know if guys have that many in practice. Like that is not something that's even a, a high percentage of practice. Not that it's ever full go, but I've seen with the defense not allowed to jump on the on the play, guys drop that all the time, and it's because of the judgment. It's like a punt coming down there. Out of that, oh man, that's fascinating. I should probably throw. I should probably be a deep ball thrower. Mm -hmm. uh, get a lot of height on that. Russell Wilson. They always talk about Russell Wilson. How he throws the deep ball and it comes down. Is that is is he the only human that does that, or are they just talk about it because he does it all the time? Well, I think there's a lot of guys that can that can throw it in that way. I think he uh, he definitely attempts uh, a lot of those, and you know they have the personnel where they they like to take a number of those shots. I think he's one of the best deep ball throwers in the game for sure. Um, and again, I think the the what it does when you throw it that high is really two things. One is it. Uh, allows your guy to run underneath it. You know, it gives you a greater margin of error. Um, and then secondly, it's it's more difficult for a DB to knock away when the ball is coming on that tra trajectory compared to a flatter ball where they can just put a hand up. It's 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 less expected too. I think the DB is expecting more of a uh, slightly flatter ball. So it's, it's a little harder for them to judge, a little harder um, to knock away and also gives you a little margin of error because if you do miss a little bit, short uh, a lot of times that can turn into a pass interference for you so um mm. you know, give you got a chance it's it's usually a better option but i don't think everybody but everybody in the league can make those type of throws because it does take shoulder flexibility it does take uh eye discipline and and, and it does take uh, an understanding of of your arm and your receivers the classic flacco dude hey what do you mean what do you mean eye discipline on a hail mary I'm not talking about a Hail Mary. I'm, I, was, I was more referring to like some of the deep balls uh, and outside of number throws. Um, but a great uh, way to try and catch me on that one, H. Oh! AJ! Oh. Hey, Suck it, dude! <laughs> Suck it! <laughs> I was cool. talking about deep balls outside of numbers. If you throw a ball that high, you, you can't just stare a guy down because it, you know, if there's a single safety on the, on the field, you're obviously going to, you know, that guy's going to get involved in the play. That's what I'm saying.